Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Gloomhaven Guildmaster. We're going to be taking the Sawbones and the Plague Herald out. Uh, I had thought about us doing the Relic Quest, but this has an ornate chest in it and we want the Quartermaster to be grabbing the chest. At least I think it's the Quartermaster. Let me just double check the Trainer because there is a specific thing for... Yeah, Quartermaster loots 10 chests. So we want to save every chest we can for that. Um, so let's do one of the travel missions instead. Uh, Reading for War, the militia that occupied Amber Hill has also taken Millpond break in and find out what they're doing there. This could be good fun. Gonna give the Reaping Scythe, ooh. That's a, that's a pretty cool looking area of effect thing. We're gonna have city archers. The Plague Herald is a bit of an archer. Uh, and city guards. So yeah, let's uh, let's give it a go. We have an encounter on the way. At a fork in the road, you spot a figure up ahead. Resting beside a gnarled tree, they appear hunched over with one hand, hand grasping their chest. As you tend to get closer, you notice uh, sorry, they notice you and beckon you over. So this is this is the Sabbath, I believe. Uh, there's a load of desperation in their voice and the pain groan as the stranger waves to get your attention. However, beneath the tree shadow, you can't quite make out who it is or what they could be. We're, go we're going to approach just in case it's not the Sabbath, but we're not going to give them any money. Yeah, as you draw near, you see a rocky Sabbath in agony, clutching at deep cracks in its glassy chest. It certainly looks like it's seen better days. It looks up to you hopeful. So he wants gold so that he can make it to the local temple and be healed. Well, there's no use helping a Savas with the cracked core. It's as good as dead. And he has cursed us in preparation for the next mission, but we are not poorer because of it. After battling the Keyport Militia, you eventually head for Mill Pond, the next town on the way. If Amber Hill's citizens were in lockdown, then what trouble could Mill Pond be facing? This time, you decide on a more cautious approach and instead survey the town from a nearby hilltop and find it bustling with enough troops and equipment to start a small war. You can see more being brought along the road coming from Keyport. The artillery emplacements are especially formidable, so you decide on a hit and run tactic to target them. The best way to do this is to split up and sneak in from two directions at once. And there's a building either side of you leading deeper into town. The group on the left hand side in an old tanner shop which is fortunately empty. Those on the right, however, send a small number of scantily clad women and men running for the exit. And you can only hope that they do not raise the alarm. Once ready, you prepare yourselves and advance. Okay. Can we do... In fact, let's check items. We'll use the tower shield, we'll use the major stamina potion, we can probably do professional using the tower shield twice and the potion. That seems reasonable. And we'll go for protector on the plague herald. I think that we're not going to have anyone become exhausted, certainly not the sore bones. All this equipment. Why would Keyport put this much money into the military ordnance outside its own walls? The artillery should be deeper in town. You'll have to fight your way to it. Without the artillery, the militia should lose morale and retreat. Okay, let's have a look at this. This is an unusual one. We have two separate rooms to deal with. So I'm gonna have to approach them, well, separately, really. Uh, we have guards that have shield. We've got archers. And this side is a lot cleaner. So let's have a look at what we could do. Luckily, they do still share pools um, of attack. So while we're moving in, we could be cursing them and that's going to affect everyone. So let's have a look at what the best plan is. Creeping curse. We move in and curse the archer. Or creeping curse, we hit the archer at range and do some cursing on him. And paralyzing bike could paralyze this guy. Do we have anything with push? Probably not. 
but we could poison with something. Ooh, spread the plague. Attack on the bottom. Creeping curse. Attack on the top. Let's do that. Let's try and... Well, we'll pick which of the targets we want to kill based on what they're doing. He's going to have to come all the way around here rather than walk over that trap, so we've got a little bit of time. Let's go back to the Sawbones. Sawbones is going to be in potentially a little bit of trouble. So these are the exit tiles that we've got to make it to. Our specific objectives are to destroy all the ancient artillery in all rooms and then reach the dungeon exit with two mercenaries. We've only got an exit on this side. So we're going to have to fight through and destroy the ancient artillery in the middle, which is fine. Question is, do I want everyone to start together? At which point these guys will be kind of isolated, or do we start on this side and kill them? We don't need to kill all enemies, so we could just ignore this, this entire room. Mercenaries must be split evenly between ancient rooms. Okay. I kind of thought that that might be the case, so... One, two, three. Yeah, you're in range. He's got to go a really long way around, actually. So, this will be fine. So, the Sawbones. What are we going to do with you? Mobile response would get a wound on both of these, and... It burns a card, which we don't particularly like. Getting in and doing prevention is key on them might be smart. So do I have something that's going to do any damage? Not really. So we may just need to move in and do a little bit of tanking. So hypothetically we do a bloody sore on one of them, or we step in step in and disarm them both, and then we do bloody saw next turn. So if we're gonna step in Maybe we start further away and we move slowly. Like really slowly, hand of the surgeon slowly. And hope this guy starts coming round. Which means we wouldn't necessarily need to disarm them, but we could still disarm them for the use of it. Okay, so this is going to allow us to move, move in and get the disarm, and then next turn we move quickly um, and do hold back the pain and bloody sore and see how that goes. It's going to be a very interesting one, this. So, the plan is for the sword bones to focus on these, allowing the archers to come closer. And the play herald is going to see who needs to be cursed and shot on this side. The city guard is um, actually doing some range stuff, but he's, he's going to be miles away. So the archer is the target. First kill. City guards doing rain stuff wasn't on my bingo card for today. At least they have stood close to each other for me. So let's get to here. And we'll do a disarm which should last until their next turn. Uh, and I'm going to get Prevention is Key back. Oh, actually, two cards. Hand of the Surgeon as well. Okay, on this side we want to move in and we want to shoot him. Maybe not particularly quickly. We could just do Vile Pestilence to poison him. 
at range. And virulent strain to deal three damage to him straight away. We could also do Gathering Doom to get a nice curse on him. Let's plan for that. So Gathering Doom is another curse. And we'll go Grasping Vermin just so we've potentially got the move up to get the gold. Over this side, we want to be going quickly. So let's get Bloody Sore off. Let's get Hold Back the Pain off and uh, do some damage to these guys. City Guard's moving after us, that's fine. So melee attacks hit everyone. Bloody sore. <coughs> that's really good. He's gonna die this turn, he's gonna die soon. Nice that he's ended up standing on the place uh, that we want to hit him. That's a bit painful. I'll take the damage for now. Let's get some curses in. It's not bad. Let's get close because we can stun him next turn. If we use... Scatter Terror so we move quickly. And Paralyzing Bite. Over this side. We want to go quickly. Do we have anything that heals on the bottom? Ooh, actually, if we use Syringe... Syringe to attack on the bottom, poison him and stun him. He will die before he gets to act because he's going to lose at least one health this turn and one health next turn. We can then do a booster shot on ourselves to get some of our health back. So, first things first. Unfortunate that uh, we didn't really get any benefit from that. Let's uh, step in a little bit here. Thank you, Poison Stun. We'll heal ourselves up, and then we just need to tank a couple of shots. That's fine. I am very fine with that. Okay, let's try this again. Let's say... Bar Pestilence and Winged Congregation. Whether we move away towards the door or not is going to depend on what he's doing, really. He's going to die, so we'd like to move three, if we can. There's plenty of move threes. And I think Hand of the Surgeon to attack. So let's say triage and hand of the surgeon will move in slowly. Ooh, city archers doing trap stuff. Yowch. I like that we have our curses. Okay. 
step in, we'll grab a little bit of gold. At the very least, we're getting some benefit from this. Have an attack. Yay! That simplifies things quite a lot for us. Plague Herald. He's already moved away, so get the poison on him. And... Well, we're not going to be healing anyone, but at least we can get the gold. We can kill him with virulent strain. And over this side, do we have anything ranged? Well, we can cure it a mixture ourselves. We can vaccine poison him, which would be interesting. would like to get some healing on myself, but I think we're going to have to step in and stab him at close range before we do anything like that. So, let's say we go in quickly with... Mm, getting a wound on him, burning a card at this stage, probably not a good plan. We could also long long rest, but I think we'll we'll vaccine shoot him, and we'll step in with curative mixture, so that he's at a disadvantage at least when he attacks us. Okay, he's doing attack attack two range four, so it's not going to be too bad. Okay. We've still got the poison on him. It's a bit of a shame, but we had to have that time zero come through at some point. Just like he did there. Alright, Plague Herald. Brilliant strain. May as well just kill this guy. And while we're here, we'll grab a little bit more money. Okay, it's going to be a long rest over this side. That's going to let us pick which card we want to lose. And I think we'll... We'll go quickly and we'll see what he's doing before we decide whether we're going to stab him or disarm him. Attack 3, range 5. He is still at close range. So I think... Doing a shield and stabbing him is going to be fine. <coughs> and we can virulent strain him to kill him next turn. And then we can long rest and heal up. So, what are we going to lose? Let's lose Grasping Vermin. We want to move quickly so we can get the virulent strain off. So we'll go straight away with that. And over this side, it's going to be a long rest. Virulent strain. Hello, you. I see you all the way over there. And we can just move a little bit closer towards the door. Sawbones, heal up a little, refresh your tower shield, and we are going to lose triage, I think. Although triage is actually really quite good just for some self-healing. Let's do, let's lose vaccine. Oh my god, there's so many good ones that we could lose. Let's lose mobile response. And we'll do triage at the start of our next turn. Over here, we want to move at least three to get to the door. So Vile Pestilence moves us to there, 
and then potentially we could like do Gathering Doom or something, but let's do Biting Gnats because it's got range 4. Maybe, maybe that'll be a little bit better. Over this side, we're going to do Triage definitely. And we could just move one space closer and get... Uh, get that gold. So Triage is coming out for our self-healing. And we'll do... Oh, I like Syringe for being able to move quickly, though. Don't want to lose Bloody Saw on it. Okay, let's say Hand of the Surgeon. And the other option... It's only range 2. It's only range 2, so that's why we're not using Vile Pestilence on this. So, up to the door. Let's see what's in the room. That is all quite far away. There's the artillery. Give it all you've got and get out of there. Protect this equipment with your lives, men. The council demands it. Okay. So, actually, coming in the, the back room is not terrible for hitting this, uh, this one here. What's... What are they going to do? So the city guard's going to move three and attack one. The archer's going to attack four, range six. Ouch. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're out of range just. Yeah, we've definitely made the right call by not just charging in willy-nilly. Uh, skip the attack because we can't target anything. Sawbones, if we move in before, you know what, get the, uh, get the triage going. And then step and get this gold. Sawbones first, I think. We need to move one, two, three, four to get up next to this one. And we've not got anything that will quite do it, but we could do like a vaccine pop. With that obstacle in the way, we'd need to go one, two, three, four, five to get round and take damage. That's not really something that we want to be doing. So it's going to have to be vaccine if we want to get any attack off. Cure to mixture and vaccine, I think. Over on the Plague Herald. You're too far away for spread the plague. But if we go gathering doom and spread the plague in that order, hopefully they'll come closer. So we'll move a bit slower on this side. All right, let's see how that goes. Yep, the archers moving closer. They're gonna be able to attack. The guard is not going to move before we get in. The artillery is also doing stuff late. Uh, we'll take one damage for now. Sawbones. Mm, maybe getting in and poisoning both of those is going to be the smart choice. Here's the 
triage. So opening the door and what range is this? It's range three. One, two, three. One, yeah, we could get it on both of those. So let's move like this. <coughs> Unexpected for it to be that way around, but I think I'd prefer it that way around. Take the one damage. Uh, I will. I will burn a card over that. Actually, let's burn. Let's burn syringe. Okay. Time to focus this guy down a bit. Nice bit of curse. And a fair bit of damage. We're going to want to go quickly to finish him off next turn. Uh, Wing Congregation will move us in. Epidemic will allow us to... No, Creeping Curse. Let's get another curse on him. Maximise the curses in the enemy decks. We want to get next to this. Or next to these two, actually. One, two, three. We don't have any move threes at the moment. That's fine. Okay. So for the moment, let's say prevention is key and bloody sore. We'll get in and just do a bit of damage on this. The guard is shielding. It's moving before the play card, which is pretty good. What are you doing? Push, target all adjacent enemies, and then attack. Eh, okay. It's not great. If we go here, he should just be able to push us back. If we go here, he might push us back onto the trap. So, for here... Hit him with a wound. At least it's going to die over time. Okay, as I said, another curse. It's unfortunate it didn't kill him. What are the archers doing? Attack four, range five. If we don't come into the room, they're going to just focus on the saw bones, so we kind of have to come in here. Yeah. Push us back in a way I did not expect. This is why the curses are so useful to us. Ow. Uh, for five damage, I will burn... Hold back the pain. For two damage, we'll use our tower shield. Okay, I think a short rest and starting to burn. Oh, you know what? Let's let's use what we've got. We'll just try and hit both of these with epidemic, which means we're going to need to get closer. Paralyzing bite will get us there. It's going to have to be a short rest over on our good friend. But I want to move in and damage this. Short will lose vaccine. So we're going to be doing bloody sore. Prevention is key. We'll not get it. We'll get us close enough. Prevention is key. Bloody sore. Let's get a wound on this. Archer's doing some range shenanigans. City Guard is moving and attacking. Sawbones. 
get yourself up to top quality. Here's your bloody saw. Nice. So these are going to die at the same time. This makes me feel quite a bit better. Ow! Take the four damage. Because we can heal damage. The guard is going to move one and attack three. So if we just move up to here. Here, sorry. He's not going to be able to reach us. Shoot them both. Hey! That's unlucky, but we got a kill. That makes things a lot easier for us. Very painful. Take the damage. Okay, we're gonna heal up with booster shot, I think. But we're gonna use curative mixture to allow us to do that. Uh, we need a short rest over the back. Sure we'll lose via pestilence. We want to do as much damage as possible to the archer. But also we want to kill the guard. So let's... Let's say spread the plague to attack on the bottom. Gathering doom to attack on the top. And we'll target as we need to. Both artillery is going to die so we can ignore them. So, booster shot here. There's our triage. Pretty smart choice to get that going. And we can start moving towards the exit, actually. Except we're immobilized, so we're not going to be doing that. We're moving to and attacking to, so not really much of a threat. But killing him would still be worthwhile. <clears throat> killing the archer, on the other hand, would be doubly worthwhile. <clears throat> oh, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> Painful. We've got cards to burn, though. Let's leave biting gnats. And we will lose... Scattered... Te no, wind congregation. We want to move quickly on this one. So scattered terror and epidemic. Actually, if we go... Scattered Terror and Creeping Curse. That may be slightly better for us. It's going to have to be a short rest over on Sawbones. In fact, if we do Virulent Strain, we can guarantee you die. And Scattered Terror allows us to start moving away. That's what we'll do. Uh, the Sawbones is going to start leaving though, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 steps to get out, or we go through the traps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but that's going to take 
some healing. We can go through the first one with no problem. So let's say curative mixture and hand of the surgeon. Move one, attack two, strengthen self. We could just ignore him. You know, he's going to hit us, but he's going to be chasing us the whole time. <laughs> Step in. Soul bones. Take the damage. And Hand of the Surgeon is... is wasted. Yowch! I'll take the damage. But I'm not happy about it. Epidemic Creeping Curse will back up and just try and shoot him behind us. He's just going to do some shielding. We can do a little bit of shielding as we go. So if we step onto this and then heal up, we can then walk over that trap and get out faster. I'm sure this is a sensible plan. Okay, backing up. Creeping curse. Now the question is, can we get out before we run out of cards? Uh, short rest, it makes no difference on the play, Herald. Short will lose Gathering Doom. What is our biggest move card? They're all move to, so it matters not. And over here, it's going to have to be a short rest. Hand of the Surgeon is a good one to lose because we can keep healing ourselves up. Step on in, take the damage, heal up. It's going to have to be a short rest. Or if we do a long rest, actually, it will give more time for you to catch up. Which means we've got more chance of getting out together. that's the other thing to bear in mind. Uh, let's lose bloody sore. We're going to be just short. Oh, this is a, this is bad. We are just short. Curative mixture actually can move through. Yeah, we're just short. Mmm, the frustration is real. So I wonder if it's going to be better for us to just go after gold at this point. We would need one, two, three on on the Plague Herald. Like, Plague Herald's got enough cards to get out, but it's just not going to do it in time. Unless this counts. If this counts for the Sawbones, despite the fact that he's going to pass out... Then we may still be fine. 
Let's find out. Does it count? Oh, is the game going to be claimed to us? Yes. Well, the sword bones did pass out, which is a shame because that means that the uh, the plague herald didn't succeed. But uh, good job without that artillery. It looks like the troops in Mill Point are pulling back. The town will be free again. Won't Keyport's defences be a little more prickly? They'll be protecting their damn council after all. Oh, there's no way we can get through defences like that into Keyport. We're going to need more troops. And I might just know where to find them. At least we did get professional for the Sawbones. We got a lot of XP. Um, play Cavill, not so much. But we got through the mission. We only got 10 gold, though. So we succeeded, but it felt like it was it was a hard fought, hard fought, not uh, not well rewarded mission. An old man who used to live in Mill Pond heard about us trying to save his hometown and gifted us his traditional Millpondian reaping scythe, which he used to harvest crops. Who knows? Maybe you'll find a use for it. It's in my store. There's too many troops to north. We'll have to get help from elsewhere. I suggest contacting the mayor of Mudview. She's always had a wise head on her shoulders. Cool. So, the reaping scythe has been added to the shop rather than given to us. It would be really good for the saw bones. It would be really good for the saw bones, except he's already using the tower shield. The plague herald, not quite as useful. So, we'll, we'll stick with what we've got at the moment, I think. With a little bit of money, we could buy a potion. Or potentially give the remote spiders to the plague herald. That has a use. You know what? We'll give you the steel ring. We don't have any spare things. Bloody axe could be very useful with the multi-attack skills. So actually, I'm, I'm quite keen on that. Let's give you the... It's melee attack only. Cancel that. Yeah, that's all, all the freebies that we've got. Still, uh, we did manage to do something over here. So let's find out. There we go. Ten city archers, five more gold. It's not quite enough for us to buy anything worthwhile. But we might be able to get something down the line. In fact, let's have a, a double check of the boots. Boots of speed we don't care about. Winged shoes, um, not, not really a fan of them. Although these could be useful for navigating things like those, those artilleries that we've seen. I think we'll we'll save our money. I think we'll uh, we'll save our money until a future mission. It feels it feels like we're really poor at the moment because we were really rich and then I suppose we bought the tower shield and we bought the major stamina potion and we did did some upgrades on other characters. But uh, yeah, interesting interesting combination. Also interesting mission having them separated like that. We are going to finish up there though, so thank you very much for coming along everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed this. As always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so, and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Gloomhaven Guildmaster. See you soon.